We'll now take a look at the cross sections that were created. We can go into the preview plan view, turn off the model preview LX1 and turn on the model preview XS1. The first thing to take a look at is our title block. Once again we use the title file and our title information will come through as per the same with our long section whatever we've typed in here will come through into our title block. Under the cross-section filtering you may recall that we previously created our sections every 2 meters but by using the filtering we're going to plot them every 20 meters and this regular colouring tolerance means that if there is a cross-section created within 3 meters of a tangent point it won't plot that cross-section it will only plot the tangent point cross-section. Down the bottom here we can include the start and end section and also include such sections as the horizontal tangent points, the vertical tangents and the crest and sag sections. Under the plot sheets layout if we extend that you'll notice that we have an extension of 5 meters on the left and 5 meters on the right as shown here 5 meters and 5 meters. This is independent of whatever we set in our cross section view. If we wanted to set a corridor width, say from the center line out 10 meters either way, then we would stick, click on the absolute extensions and that would give us a 20 meter corridor that we were plotting. If we expand out the plot sheet layout and have a look at the margins, the margins work exactly the same as they do with the long section or the plan plotting. So it's just the margins from the left, right, top and bottom. The subplot gap is the distances between each section. So if you need to get more sections on a plan view then you can tighten up the sections and there's a bit of a diagram here explaining all of that. Under the boxes center lines area if we extend that out and go to the common parameters we can see the first thing we have is our datum and our datum is what's ticked on here and 12D will automatically extract a datum height and this is where we set up its textile etc. If I expand out the common parameters you see we have such things as tins to label and once again this provides creating sets and we have just one set which is our ground tin which is shown at the top and labeled down the bottom here. If I click on boxes tins titles areas we're going to use set number one which is comes from up here and we're going to set up its titles, which once again, natural surface in green. The heights is this area in here, and the depths we're not using. So we've set that to do not label depths. In a cross section view, the center line chainage is just labeled at the bottom of each section, as you can see just here, and that's set up under center line chainage. I just close this down. We have a look under the boxes area here. We've already had a look at the tins titles, but if we now have a look at our offset titles values, that's this area here. So we have our offset title and the textile, and down the bottom we have the value, which is shown here. The same with our primary string title. We have the title at the top and the value at the bottom. If we open up the uprights, you can see here we can draw our uprights to the primary string, which we have set, or we could draw it to the maximum height, which in this cross section here would go all the way up to the tin, or we could draw it to any one particular tin. Under the uprights offset staggering, if we click on that, you can see that we can exclude certain uprights. So for example here where we have our curb and channel, if we were to include the uprights for the invert of curb and the top of curb, it would become very clustered down here and it wouldn't provide us any additional information. So we can exclude those two uprights. The staggering that you see here is set in here. So we have the top of staggering and the bottom of staggering and the stagger gap factor, which is a gap factor de determined by the height of the text. Under corridors, once again, this works the same as we'd seen in our cross-section uh, view, long-section view, and our long-section plotting. And if we were to have a look at chainage number 180, 
at the top here you can see that our pipe is drawn as it cuts through or where it cuts through the cross section. If we now have a look at the grades area here we can see the grades are labelled at the top of our cross section and some of the features are anything that has a segment length of less than 10 millimetres there will be no grade added so if you have a look through our kerbin channel here you'll see that we have no grades cluttering up this part of the cross section we can see that our, down the bottom we have a grade threshold and that grade threshold is 8 and that means that anything up to 8% will be shown as a percentage and anything above 8% will be shown as a 1 in grade so things like the footpath the crossfall of the actual road will be shown as percentages and the drains will be shown as a 1 in grade you may have noticed that our different boxing layers appear to be solid fills this is done under the hatching cut and fill where we've set up three sets and each one uses a triangulation so between the design and the curbing the curbing the sub base the sub base and the subgrade we then went into our cut section because they're always going to be in cut as their boxing layers and we set up a hatching pattern that was very close together so if you actually zoom in you'll notice that that is actually a hatch but if that was to be plotted it would just look like a solid fill and we set our hatch pattern to be 45 degrees our curb and channel was grey our sub base was magenta and our subgrade was brown if we have a look at our cuts area once again the same as with our long section we've created text for where our pipes cut through our cross section and they're using the two different models for the sewer pipe and the water pipe this is the water pipe and once again we can go into the offset and label our offset which is down the bottom here and we have a prefix of OS we can label the heights prefix of top RL and a suffix of meters label our diameters same way we did with our long section once again you can have a factor if you want to show that as 300 millimeters rather than 0 0.3 meters and on this occasion we've also included a symbol which shows the cross mark to show that we've picked it up at the obvert of this pipe rather than at the invert and we've included a label and the label is just what the pipe is in this case a DICL water pipe if we now wanted to plot this data out to AutoCAD or to a printer we would go back to the front page we change our plotter type from model to either a Windows device a PDF writer or some kind of DWG standard and hit plot 